I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. The podcast that finishes your workday in a very Red Raider way. This is the Tech Talk Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Happy Wednesday. It is Tech Talk here on Double T 97.3, Double T Sports Network.com, and the Double T 97.3 mobile app brought to you by Happy State Bank. We are live from the first United Bank studio. We'll be here until 6 o'clock. You can call us. On the Visual Edge IT hotline, 806-771-0973. That number is open for you. Or you can hit us up on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Thoughts, comments, questions, all of that. Welcome there. You can watch us in the mobile app just like you can watch us on Fox 34 News Now and on YouTube. And if you're watching on YouTube, eh, let's go ahead and uh, subscribe over there. What the heck? I say go for it. Could be fun. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Clint Scott, Dr. Mike Gustafson. Kyler Brown behind the glass. Gus, how goes your Wednesday? Oh, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yep. First world stuff, yep. right? Yep. Yeah, it's all good. Just being a human, being an adult. Yeah, human, man. Huh? Yes, sir. I get it. Sometimes not fun. Uh, Kyler, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, you know, not not great, but I'm I'm good. All right, how do we get both of you to a, a great point today? What can we do? For mm. Kyler, just play Mavs highlights well, from you last night? Yeah, I was uh-huh. I was. No, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. The, uh, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just, you just asked how the day has been. I'm like, sure. I'm ready to. Well, I didn't say you're like, yeah, ready, to, little, ready to jump off a <laughs> All the little, no, 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 no. All the little first world inconveniences, but, yep, schedule changes that were very specifically set up for one thing and hey we're, you, you know, know who's probably having a mixed day today on Mercy. a wednesday whatever his name is i mean i don't i don't know if they ever said it or got it i'm sure it's out there somewhere uh i know there were two fans kicked out but the one specifically oh, last night trying stupid. to rip the ball out of the glove I, I couldn't believe that i was watching that take right. place like <laughs> i've i don't know if that's ever been done there's been s- circumstances where like a fan catches it yeah, and they go to they put right. their glove under it and that, that that's ha- that's happened before but and we had that until he grabbed Betts's glove because yeah. the initial deal is kind of bartman like where they're all playing a foul for ball him, for him Didn't to reach grab, the grab the glove <laughs> i've never man. seen that before oh man well, I, I was and, like i was like Betts is a good dude and like uh-huh. and and so he was pissed and you're like hey there's something something just happened there and it looked it looked funky because he had gone in there and kind of stayed, you know. It just right. looked to the and then they show the replay and the one dude's grabbing him and then their comments are like, "Yeah, nobody comes over this wall." Like, hey, take it easy there. Yeah, Davey Cap- Crockett, Captain New York over there. You can you can deuces, pal. You can get get gone. Like, just so brutal. <laughs> and and the tough thing about that is, I really <laughs> thought about it. And I was thinking, you know, there's a there's a Texas Tech aspect to this in terms of, you know, we pride ourselves on this being a tough place to play Mm -hmm. football, basketball, right? And so we, we, you know, you try to live a little bit close to the edge on that to make it Mm -hmm. extra tough, right? And then, you know, so that what that does is ignites a few extra passions yeah, so sure. then somebody uh-huh. you know throws something or does stupid stuff or whatever and then there goes the tech fans again because right. the instinct was there goes the yankee fans again like no just so we're clear there goes those two dumb you know what right you know like that uh-huh. and so it's it's it, my first instinct was to paint them all with a broad brush like no that's what irks me when that happens to us i assumed it was jamie i'll be honest yeah, i had yeah. been watching so much jamie to make sure fired it wasn't up. Him. he was yeah. trying to inspire the troops jamie also gained a couple lbs too <laughs> yeah oh my gosh but those dudes did get john boy had the clip those dudes yeah. got tossed and the yankees called him this morning and said hey you're not welcome back and if you are if you do try to come back We'll I don't know, find we'll, you. Yeah, what will happen? Arrests or something. So, I, I don't know. We'll have trespassing or something. So it, it was weird, like, going back to, to the play live because 
I don't know. I, I feel like there's been a lot of team and fan interactions lately that I've been like, ooh, that's a bad look. Like, I think of, like, Sirianni and the Browns from a couple of weeks yeah. ago where he's, like, own, chirping man. at Browns fans and stuff. <laughs> yeah. and, and, like, I know he's over there at the wall, but you know, it's kind of half – Watching the play, and my mind jumped to, and I was I was surprised too, and not that I'm like, you know, pin pals with Mookie Betts or anything like that. It just didn't. It kind of seemed out of character. Yeah, good and, dude. And and it yeah. looked. I was like, oh no, like is he like is he barking at a fan and why? Right, right. And then you see, at least for me, and then you see it, and it's like, oh <laughs> yeah, I would have been oh, livid. That would yeah, that would irk you. Just I mean, that would irk you on a number of levels uh, to have somebody like. In that moment, too. I mean, just in, in, in general, yeah, but like, not, like what? That would fire up anybody. What kind of territory yeah. do you think you're in? Because you're, you know, if if Mookie acts wrong or if that's a lower wall and Mookie, you know, throws a mm-hmm. punch at the dude to get him to like, then what, what you got? You got oh, mayhem, yeah. you know? And, and, and not that he would be completely wrong to do that. So I'm saying, like, Mookie Betts handled himself great. He was agitated, but he also he he chirped a little bit, said yeah. something to the ump, and then got away, walked mm-hmm. away. You know, didn't stand there and engage, and yeah, and you know, and then next thing you know, there's bottles being thrown or whatever. He he handled it like expertly, but just yeah, mm-hmm. just such a bad look. And it, like, dude, come on, man. I mean, root for your team, get after it, and all that stuff. But really, there was one angle that was like from uh, you know, a fan angle from the stands. When the security's going down there to launch him out of the game, oh, okay. and they look like shocked that they're getting kicked yeah. out for like, just, it's like what did thinking, you think was gonna happen? They're thinking they're getting put in the Yankee fan hall. Oh thing. yeah, like, no, dude. I am a on. hero forever. You know, I, I am a Bronx bomber. It is I. Yeah. <laughs> fan of the century. I, I've told you guys it's probably been a year <laughs> Babe Ruth's or two. looking down and smiling on yeah. me today. The in that one time years ago, probably pre-COVID, the. Uh, Reed Ryan was giving us a kind of a little tour during it was during game of day. It was like the fifth inning. And one of the rooms he walked us into, you know, you start getting into the tunnels and all the maze and everything. Kind of, I don't know where we were, but he walks us into the security room. Badges in, we walk in and there's two or three people in front of a wall of monitors, and all of those monitors are high res cams on sections. Mm-hmm. And so when that kind of stuff happens. You know, if you think, hey, I'm going to throw a bottle, hey, nobody's going to see me. They, they they rewind it, they zoom in, and they go, hey, guy in the red shirt, row seven, section 422. You know, I mean, it's like, and 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 they even they had even had a, a little like pickpocket deal out in the parking lot, and the girl was burning a DVD and giving it to the police. And I mean, it's like, <laughs> hey, man, that's not the place to go do anything. Those stadiums, you think you're there with fifty thousand people, nobody's going to see you. It's quite the opposite. We all saw national stage, in fact. Yeah. It is Tech Talk on Double T 97.3. The podcast put together with Red Raider fans in mind. This is the Tech Talk podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. It is Tech Talk here on Double T 97.3, Double T Sports Network.com, and the Double T 97.3 mobile app, Clint. Gus, Kyler, is this a holdover here from yep. uh, back in time? That's the uh, Canadian rapper Snow. List all the Canadian rappers you can think of, Clint. Go. Uh, pff, Drake. Uh, Jim Carrey. Yeah, Drake. There you go. Jim Carrey little, being being one. Vanilla Ice on uh, In Living Color. Does that count? <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, I couldn't tell you who is and who isn't Canadian in the rapping world. I apologize yeah, the, for uh, my ignorance. In the... Um, I guess the Mount Rushmore of uh, Canadian sure rappers. We've got Drake, <laughs> and then maybe there's some others out there we don't know about, right? Sure. Maybe there's. Oh, I had no idea. Well, Joe Blow was a <laughs> Canada. I had no idea. Yeah, Biggie Smalls was actually from Quebec. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know on the. Uh, are you Kyler? You look like as if you're googling Canadian rappers right now. I am, and I can tell from the face. <laughs> Tory Lanes kind of surprised me. I didn't know he was Canadian. Who? Tory Lanes. Okay. He's more of an R and B kind of guy. Okay. Um, Dax is a new rapper. A lot of these guys. There's a lot, but a lot of them I'm really not familiar with. 
Okay. I feel like I'm gonna miss. Yeah, if you if he started rattling through those, I would be like, I don't know who that is. Not on a lot of them. Lil Windex. <laughs> Golly, that's that's awesome right there. That's uh, <laughs> that's made up stuff there. Yeah, right? that's like me, like in high school, and be like, oh, they call me Lil Windex. They call know, me Lil like, Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. They call me a little pine saw because I'm so fresh. Mm. Yeah. Uh huh. And that's nice. the power of pine saw. Uh, hey, we got some thoughts and comments from Coach Tadlock. And of course, uh, Red and Black series going on right now in game one. It's so early. It is in the fall. Uh, and you're a couple of sports away from starting this. But obviously, right now, you can. Well, you can have baseball conversation anytime you like, uh, including the uh, Talking Tech Baseball podcast that uh, one episode has been released already. And Gus, you'll be featured on uh, a lot of those. But what are you what are you looking forward to with this upcoming season of Red Raider baseball? Oh, g- getting right. Um, I mean, first time to miss the playoffs and. NCAA tournament and you know since 2015 really the infancy of coach Tadlock's mm-hmm. time um yeah and that and that uh, a season that just fell flat at the end last mm-hmm. year I don't think any anyone went into last year with visions of grandeur but you're thinking well it's gonna be an NCAA tournament team you know mm-hmm. and and they just fell off the map at the end of the year so um you know new faces I think uh new faces getting the program right and uh playing in a new league I mean, which is not anything new for the big 12 it'll just be the spring sports first time to do this but mm-hmm. a lot of new opponents and a lot of new uh, you know ballparks and new faces and um you know we saw what seven eight portal entries some key juco guys mm-hmm. uh, not all pitchers but several pitchers in that group and uh, you know you gotta have health. You gotta you gotta have you gotta have some guys staying healthy, sure. especially on the mound. The key guys, um, you know, Rogers, Petty, those dudes that are ready to go. They're in their draft years. Um, you know, Rogers. Rogers had scouts out there both times. I saw him throw this fall mm-hmm. on Saturdays, and uh, you know, Jamie's done an excellent job of recapping scrimmages and those things. I mean, lately we've seen a lot of Pompey at third, mm-hmm. Tracer at short. Um, Bravo at second, um, you know, and, yeah. and uh, there there could be some competition there at third. You could have the Cal third, the Cal kid staying at third base, the Cal transfer, him moving to first, which is where he played last year. That's what the fall's here to do, sort that stuff out. Uh, Coach Tadlock talked about that. He uh, described how the fall has gone so far. Uh, the fall's been really good. Um Going into this week, guys have been uh, – they've gotten after it from day one. Um, you know, we've got roughly 45 guys out there and uh, been inter-squadding here for about a month, I would say, and uh, had some good individual workouts before that. And um, a lot of versatility within the roster, a lot of pitching. Um, guys are playing pretty good right now. We have a lengthier uh, answer on another question we'll get to a little bit later on, but I know we're about to run up to another break. But he also talked about who trended up the most uh, during summer ball. Let me think about this. Mac Ewer went out to the Cape, threw the ball good. Um, Beavis threw up in uh, New England Collegiate League. as He's a transfer, but he threw the ball good. Crotchville was in the Cape. He threw good at times. Um, as far as off last year's team, um, Trendon didn't throw, Petty didn't throw, Yatera didn't throw. And so you're kind of getting, you know, you're, I mean, some of those guys didn't throw uh, that you're kind of asking about, I would say. Yeah, and that makes sense too, because you're uh, the dudes that usually young guys that carry bigger innings loads usually don't go throw mm-hmm. in the summer just because you're trying to, trying to manage all that. Um, um, I thought by the very end of the spring last year, Yatera was – wasn't what he was at the very beginning when when he was fresh mm-hmm. you know just was stuff was popping and all and by the end he looked he looked a little down um but that can just be the freshman stuff you mm-hmm. know and so he he he's one of the guys on that list so you go yeah he didn't need to go out but some dude that 
through 15 innings and was maybe lightly used, which Crotch felt was at, at uh, Auburn, mm-hmm. getting him up there to the Cape, getting some more innings. Remember, Hewer had had some stretches where he was out, I think, right. as I recall, rib, oblique type thing. He went to the Cape, got a few innings, um, a few outings, uh, and he threw well in his most recent outing, three innings of, uh, I, I think, five strikeouts and in three innings. Uh, gave up a home run to Bravo, and that was it. That was the only hit he gave up. Um, but, yeah, those are the kind of dudes that need to – I mean, and, and it's easy to point to all the new guys and go, we need all these new guys to be great. Yeah, also need Hewer, Hutera, Rogers, Petty, you know, those dudes, uh, Trent and Parrish, those dudes – carry the load like the veterans they are and then the new dudes compliment and then you can go hey we got like eight guys we Mm -hmm. can trust but you know we'll we'll see you don't want it to be a complete refresh because you'd like to see some of those guys that have shown you some nice things do the 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 classic development trait of taking that next step forward and then adding into that absolutely it is tech talk play the day when we come back it's every red raiders favorite podcast this is the Tech Talk Podcast from Double D 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. It is a Wednesday edition of Tech Talk. Thanks for joining us here on Double T 97.3, Double T Sports Network.com, and the Double T 97.3 mobile app brought to you by Happy State Bank. We'll give you a secret word and tell you what's going on at 445. Uh, we'll get into some Big 12 football in 15 minutes from now. Uh, but up next, Clint Scott, Dr. Mike Gustafson, it is Kyler Brown with our play of the day. Bases loaded, two down, bottom of the third. Here's the pitch. Swing and a ball drilled, left field. Hernandez back, gone! Grand slam, Anthony Volpe over the left field wall. And Yankee Stadium explodes. It's 5-2 New York. The bottom of the Yankees lineup really came in clutch yesterday and helped save this game and this series so far. That grand slam from Volpe sparked eventually 11 runs that were scored by the Yankees. It can be debated whether the Dodgers had a mindset of, ah, let's just take it in game five. We'll give them this one. Um, but <laughs> they they stepped up, man, and I'm I'm not really pulling for any one of these teams in particular. Uh, they're both two of the mainly talked about teams in the in the league. Um, but I'm I'm just wanting a good series, man. I didn't want to see a sweep. I would love to see a game six forced, possibly even a game seven. I would. Uh, I mean, watching history is always fun. So being able to see the Yankees come back from a three zero, I think would be pretty interesting. What would be worse? Let me ask this for a Yankees fan. And here's your here's your big if because I mean, so the Dodgers could win it tonight, and it just be a question that floats away with the wind, which is most likely what'll happen. But what would be worse as a Yankees fan if it was just over tonight, or if you battled all the way back to a game seven and lost it there? Yeah. What would you would rather be, have happen? That would be. Rip the Band-Aid off. Yeah, that'd be yeah. tough. Get it, get it done. I, I just think having the – okay, for example, I know it's a different sport, but for example, the Cowboys against the 49ers this Sunday, they had a fake comeback, basically. Just ha- did all this mm-hmm. good stuff. Did Had two great scoring drives back-to-back just to come out and go four and out on the potential game-winning drive. And I think that'd be pretty similar uh, compared to forcing a game seven, somehow miraculously forcing a game seven and then losing – I would hate that. (laughs) (laughs) To me, it would be like a double gut punch. Like, you had me believing again. Yeah. Uh, This on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Uh, If Arky was listening to the Aggies, the Aggies wouldn't be silent about it. Right. Uh, This on the chat line. Guys, you know something is going on with Baylor and TCU. Uh Old Razzle DeHazzle said that's probably why it seemed like the Baptist knew all of our moves. Well, that's, I mean, that's what's being thrown around there for sure. Mm-hmm. It's interesting because the, the, it, let's, let's just play that out if that's the, if that's the rumor, and it is, mm-hmm. that if the Baylor thing, it was a rumor that, that they somehow were able to hear our place. You think, well, how would that come to light? Well, a lot of connections in the Baylor staff to, 
s- some likable connections on this tech staff. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I mean, it's it's akin to it's not as. Uh, I mean, if I mean it, this goes back to the same question we had with Astros with Connor Stallions, all that, all the rumored stuff, Red Sox going back, mm-hmm. um, and umpteen zillion more allegations but um in all sports if if i'm standing out there at second base and i'm playing i'm i'm the base runner at second base and i can look in there at your signals catcher and i can decipher yeah. those and tell my hitter with a little hand sign or something hey here comes a fastball or here comes an off speed pitch and then and i'm right and then I can go around and get in the dugout and go, hey, fellas, when I was on second, it was the first sign after two, or mm-hmm. it was the second sign. And then you get out there, and you're able to tell Kyler what's coming, and we go on. That That's just us being smart. If we've got dudes over there on our sidelines that can look over there at their signals and say, hey, every time they show the Simpsons cartoon board, they blitz the safety. Mm-hmm. Let's, you know, they just showed the thing. Hey, get ready for the safety blitz. And then they confirm it for you a couple of times. And then you go, okay, let's see what happens. Yeah. If you're creating algorithms and you've got cameras over there on it and you're doing all that, that's different. And that's what, that's what we'd be talking about. Now, again, this, this could have been something. And again, playing out the hypothetical. All right. Sure. That, that, that this would have taken place, but this could be something that somebody stumbled across like, Hey, Coach, I flipped the uh, headset over to ch- Channel Seven, and we can hear text plays. You know, like <laughs> or Arkansas could hear A and M plays, or wh- whoever. Again, ho- hopefully, there's nothing to this mm-hmm. in a way that it's it's just something that the Big Twelve can head it off, get the technology encrypted, and get it back mm-hmm. out there. Well, that's what like the the wording uh, in the athletic story is. One Big Twelve administrator said that the technology was being encrypted. And that there was, and you know, the active. We are going to try to break into your comms and break into your channel. Well, you know, whatever that looks like. Technology wizard over here, obviously. Uh, by the way, hacker movies are always so funny huh. to me when they can just and just this is oh, yeah. letters and numbers of nothingness. And like, I'm into the White House of security. You're welcome. Good job, you did it. Right, uh, criminal minds, yeah. little adorable little nerdy <laughs> lady that's able to look up anything and hack cell phones. And- the the the. Well, <sighs> The biggest reason of why I don't want this to blow up and be something like real or something that is just, uh, you know, something that just takes over stories and ESPN and The Athletic and Big 12 and chat, I mean, just college football, is the comms link, the what you're doing right now was supposed to solve some of the stuff that right. we just talked about all last year with Connor Stallions and Michigan and oh my gosh, the Wolverines had our sign. Like, all of that. This sure. was supposed to be the remedy to that. Yeah, and I was, was experimented oh, with in the bowl It's almost and... a selfish reason because like, well, I was just so over it at a certain point last year. And it yeah. just, we kept on having to go back to it because it was such a huge story. And it was like, quote-unquote, shaping the outline of the college football playoff. And so I just want that to not happen again because, this was again, this was supposed to be the remedy to that. And like you said, this was something that was tested. This is something that I think a lot of college coaches have wanted for a long time because the NFL has had it. And uh, if it just turns into just another way to uh, argue over this and say, hey, they're cheating, and that be instead of just watching the product on the field and just being able to enjoy the game as a fan – and it will be a problem. I'm not saying like, oh, if they're if they're if they're cheating, if they're doing something they're not supposed to, if they are actively trying to break into those comms links that I want to sit here with like my with my head in the sand and go like, I just don't want to know about it. La 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 la. It's just can we can we not have this be a thing? Yeah, I, I please could not agree more. Just uh there's so many annoying things that have already happened in the sport and right. all across all college sports. Can I, we not just have another cheating angle no, here, no. please? Let's hope not. Let's hope this is just something that they realize, hey, this this thing, this technology can be exploited. Let's head this off right now. Mm-hmm. And 
and be done with it instead of what you're saying that there's some but that's also probably asking the impossible because if there's level. something to be exploited someone Leap will form. eventually exploit yes. it right oh yeah no somebody there's gonna be a disgruntled former employee that's gonna go yeah oh, we got mm-hmm. the a dude doesn't get the job he's looking for next year or something or he's out or mm-hmm. like happy to talk if you ain't cheating you ain't trying it is tech talk on double t 97 three back with more next <laughs> podcast put together with red raider fans in mind this is the tech talk podcast from double t 97.3 presented by cantex roofing and construction welcome back to tech talk you've got us on double t 97.3 clint scott dr mike gustafson kyler brown behind the glass taking care of us keep hitting us up on the yates flooring center chat line thoughts comments questions all of that Welcome there. Uh, We got this on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. We know it has not been the tech defense getting the calls. It would be sadder if it was. Yeah. It would be worse if it was. Uh, Bobby Hot Dog said J-Rock and the Rock Pile. That's got to be a Canadian rapper. I'm I'm looking it up. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that's in relation to Canadian rappers. Yeah, okay. I didn't realize it was from the Trailer Park Boys. I, I've i never actually seen that show. You know what? I didn't realize I've that seen, either. I've seen clips. Yeah, I've only seen clips of it, too. And the clips have been very funny, but I've never... I didn't... For a while, when I was like seeing it pop up on, like I don't know, like YouTube shorts or whatever, uh, I was just like, is this a real show? <laughs> I'm, I'm usually a fan of stupid funny. Like I, I'm, yeah. I have that kind of sense of humor. Uh-huh. But uh, that show just seems a little little too much for me i'm i would be uh interested i just just put it on the the pile of shows that i am interested in but probably will never actually get around to watching and say the name of the show trailer park boys okay Mm -hmm. the canadian show i'm thinking of um letter kenny yes yeah Uh the the big dude also a show that's on that list right the big dude the friend (laughs) uh i can't think of his name the dude was doing stand-up about two or three weeks ago in St. Louis. I had no idea. Um, yeah, so the Letterkenny people. K. That's, Trevor Wilson? Maybe. What's his character name? Dan? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is he? I think he, I'm just realizing. Like big dude. He has the, I believe, the stand-up that, uh, or little segment bit, whatever, uh, where he's talking about the different variations of American Cap and Crunch and how he's upset that there are more variations in Canada. Oh. And is also asking uh, why uh, <laughs> Guy Fieri has a bad rap just because he wears flame t shirts and too much jewelry. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's just connecting in my brain. Uh, this from Bullfighter. Uh, from that uh, play in the World Series. If that play would have happened in the NBA, there would have been punches thrown right then and there. Well, it, it, yeah, could be. I uh, And, again, I, I, I give some credit to uh, Mookie Betts because mm-hmm. he uh, – Mookie's high-character dude, and uh, he had every right to – of course, he was he was sort of hanging on the wall too. He didn't have, he, he, he wouldn't have been in a great position to be – Fire and punches at the end of his reach up there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Having to jump to punch someone. Right. Wouldn't probably hurt. should not worry pulled, about it. He was trying to pull his glove back. Yeah. The dudes are hanging on it. Like, yeah, that was that was the story there. But <laughs> anytime you have to get a running start to punch someone, yeah, it's gonna be tough. I would I would yeah. tell you not to not to put yourself probably in that situation. Yeah, it's go well. I'm not condoning I mean, better, fighting any anyways, but like, yeah, we, certainly. <laughs> We talked about you Rumble and Jungle. Gravity working against you. Don't do it. Yeah, Rumble and Jungle 50 years ago today. Nobody was jumping to throw a punch there. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, you, you you want your feet on the ground, right? <laughs> want a transfer of power there, not not reaching up and trying to. Yeah, I think all Mookie was trying to do was get his glove back. And dudes yeah. are like trying to pull his glove mm-hmm. off and get a call there. And it was stupid. But yeah, thank goodness. Mookie Betts. I've told you this little little trivial nugget here. Mookie Betts was signed by a scout with the Red Sox, who uh, was our GA when I played my freshman mm-hmm. year here at Tech. 
Danny Watkins. Yeah, Do you uh, text him? Say good, good call. Absolutely. You know, I've talked about it. In fact, probably I, a good decision. We got him one time when I was on the show with um, Coach Ashby, mm-hmm. who who was his boss. You know, that was he was the head coach when when Danny was his GA, and and uh, he talked about bets, and he said, "Hey, if you saw my scouting notes, you would know that I didn't pick him to be the player that he's become. Like the things that mm-hmm. Coach Watkins saw and." Betts is like he's far exceeded that. And he goes, so don't give me too much credit here. Yeah. If you saw my notes, you'd think that I've because I think Betts is a fifth or sixth round pick. He was headed to mm-hmm. Tennessee, I think, um, from Nashville, headed to Tennessee, and they got him signed. And boy, he became one of the best in the business and MVP. Yeah, if you can't be the guy, it's it's still cool to be the guy that discovered the guy. Oh, sure, <laughs> sure. But yeah, I, I didn't mean to jump off the the topic oh. there, but Betts is uh, Betts could have escalated that in hurry in it because I think I gave credit to when when the he finally gets his glove away and he's pointing in the stands like, hey man, you know, mm-hmm. like, and then the ump reacts to it and and uh, and then we're getting replays, but by then. Betts had drifted back out in the right field. Like I'm getting out, getting out of this deal because mm-hmm. him standing there, he could have got showered with, who knows what. Yeah, <laughs> you know, all sorts of pelted with uh, rocks and garbage. To quote David okay, Letterman, that's what I was also thinking. We're, yeah, yeah to, just that. to quote Larry Bud Melman, they pelted us with rocks and garbage. <laughs> This uh, from Ben, uh, Henry Winkler's best character has got to be Mr. Coach Klein from The Water Boy. That's how I imagine oh, him. Nice. <laughs> Uh, this on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Uh, it is a worn 2023 World Series Josh Young jersey. Uh, Bullfighter asked, "How much would y'all pay for this jersey?" Right there. Ooh, game one. Pretty sweet. Uh huh. I don't know the answer to that. I I because I would get. Um, it was also worn for what it's worth. It says here on the list. Uh, it was also worn when he had uh, a game there in the a- ALCS against Houston. So it's not just not just Ooh. not just game. It says game one of the World Series. So not just the World Series, but you got a couple other That's games in there as well. I have an email in my inbox. I shouldn't say this on the radio. I have an email in my inbox from the Texas Rangers wanting to know when the first pitch luncheon is. I uh, I'm you not are. a Rangers guest has been the last couple of years, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Josh Young. Is he coming back? Uh, I'm not getting, not get getting that one? far ahead. I don't <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. Come on. Gonna ask if you're gonna tee it up. I'll be I'll say this. I'm not the person to ask because uh, I do like jerseys, but I've never been a know, buy a jersey that's... guy. So I don't know like what right. I, I wouldn't know what to suggest. Right. Because there's probably like normal jerseys that people will buy that would like blow my mind. I'm like, you spent that on that sort of thing? I don't know. Game worn World Series. No, it's pretty cool. Three fifty. Is that too? Is that I bet too you low? Up, I ch- probably I bet too you low. End up being it's low probably there. Probably yeah. way too low. I was gonna say it's definitely significantly higher. Yeah. Fine. So. Two million dollars. I'm saying, yeah, I don't think that's going to get a cut. Ah, the two million probably cover. <laughs> or you get a lot of jerseys for two million. <laughs> <laughs> Every jersey he's ever worn. Exactly. It is Tech Talk. The podcast that finishes your workday in a very Red Raider way. This is the Tech Talk podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. It is Tech Talk here on Double T 97.3. Clint Scott, Dr. Mike Gustafson, Kyler Brown. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, Ask Tech Talk in 15 minutes from now. Give us your questions for that. Uh... Yeah, man, this the the helmet encryption story and unsecure frequencies now is just doing the popping up everywhere. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so here we go. See what we see what comes of it and uh, see what uh, officially comes out. Other than that, what we know as of now, what it, what it advances to. Uh, another story that came out last night, I believe it was last night, maybe early this morning. Pete Thamel. I believe was the first one to have it, uh, had tweeted out that Baron Morton looked strong in practice and is expected to go, which was just interesting yeah. that it was Pete Thamel that had it. Yep, and, and it helps that, uh, I mean, the, 
the, the clarity they got from the fact that uh, on Sunday they knew there was nothing structural, and then all along this was non-throwing shoulder. But uh, that gives you a sense of it mm-hmm. gives you a sense of him not playing through some lingering thing mm-hmm. and the throwing arm and whatnot. Mm-hmm. It's you know so just for I guess Pete Thamel, it's just interesting that that. You know, who reached out to him to let him know? Because I just, I just wouldn't have expected oh, him to be like yeah. hunting around on that story. Sure. Um, so yeah, it, and we talked about this, I think, on Monday, if I have this right. You know, because obviously the question is, okay, well, is it going to be Will Hammond here? You know, if, obviously if, if he can't go, it's going to be Will Hammond. But is there some sort of quarterback controversy? And I just don't think with this staff there's going to be. Although Will Hammond looked great, and I think showed you why you should be excited about him and if Barron does go down or for some reason if something is altered from now to Saturday um, I think most of us would be very comfortable with seeing him reps and from what we've seen a lot of people would rather it be Will Hammond um, but with this staff I just if, if Barron can go it's going to be Barron agree yeah this uh, this, this has been the, the the backup quarterback thing has been a uh, has been sport and fodder since I mean probably forever because the mm-hmm. backup QB hadn't mm-hmm. yeah it usually ha- has a relatively safe role over there and we got to see some good things from from Will Hammond but also a critical mistake and uh, yeah and there's plenty to be excited about there but I don't I don't know that uh, we're to the point that uh the, the starters lost his job does it make it a little bit easier to dream on will hammond certainly mm-hmm. everyone excited about his future certainly mm-hmm. is the future now i you know probably probably depends on uh the offense playing well this weekend uh, i'll say this though on the other side i mean because baron has been good this year he just hasn't been you know like that great i don't think he's been anything elite or special but if he I don't know. Saw what uh, what we all saw of what Hammond can do on the field. If that put a little bit more pressure to amp up the play a little bit more, I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, say no to that, Gus. Right. Yeah. Uh, going back to uh, this story now, Max Olson has it. I think Max Olson might have the most in-depth piece as of right now. As you're doing the, well, here's this from the Athletic. Here's this from Football Scoop. Now here's this uh, with uh, ESPN. Now. Uh, here is your here's your wording on it, which I think is very important when you get to these types of things. So it was you know Kirby Hokut? This is the first time you've seen Kirby Hokut's name right. be involved in it. Uh, said he had raised the issue during a call with the Big 12 athletic directors yesterday. Uh, after learning the Red Raiders helmet communications were unencrypted and accessible to anyone with a scanner and knowledge of how to locate the frequencies. Uh, and let's see, uh, Texas Tech has requested a report from the Big 12 on its recent games against TCU and Baylor to ensure the integrity of the games were not compromised, and the conference is accommodating that request. Again, the wording is selective here because they're not saying TCU or Baylor for sure cheated, but hey, we just want to make sure since this was, a, if someone was able to, they could have sure. with our technology. So it's still not, hey, <laughs> the Bears cheated or hey, the Horn Frogs cheated, but we're telling you there was the option to. And so the Big 12 uh, is accommodating that. And they should. I mean, that, that's a real, if, if there are concerns, especially in something that you're doing for the first year, you should be making sure everything is done the correct way. Uh, and, I mean, are we surprised that there was a hiccup along the way? I'm not. Am I annoyed that it was Texas Tech that it had to right, that we happen had to? Be to? Involved. Absolutely. A hundred percent. So, yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know what Kirby knows, if there's anything more to it than his statement. Mm-hmm. Uh, this on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Uh, man, Baylor was well prepared. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Did I just hear? 
hear you uh, that Tech is hiring the Crypt Keeper as offensive coordinator. There's a bunch of syllables from us going back and forth in stories there that uh, got mixed up a little bit. Uh, this on the chat line, Bullfighter wants to know if Gustamus is going to hook a brother up there for the uh, baseball legend. Um, yeah, probably not. Yeah, <laughs> I love you, dude. Man. That's a that's a fundraiser. Come on, guys. You really don't have twenty five dollars to get big shooter. You got nine hundred dollars for a jersey. That um, well, he's not I'm going to a, if he gets the jersey. Right. I'm if offering he gets you a seventy five dollar opportunity to get an autograph, <laughs> possibly. Yeah, love you, dude. But probably not. But. You you run in a well heeled crowd. You know somebody that buys a table of that thing. Work it, bullfighter. Let's go. <laughs> Who's your banker? Your big shooter. It is. <laughs> work it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> work dude. it. You know people who have a table. Trust me. That, Call them out. Call them out. That is if you can't swing that seventy five dollars. It is. Uh, well, again, if he buys that jersey. Probably not going to be able to. That's a lot of right, uh, cash. Worth it. I say. I say. Pull the trigger. Scrape it together, man. It's uh, Tech Talk and Double T ninety seven three. This has been the Tech Talk podcast presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Check out our library of Double T ninety seven three podcasts at double t ninety seven three dot com.